Good morning and welcome. I'm Aviation General Manager Miguel Southwell at Hotspool Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Protecting our guests is our top priority. And we have gathered here today to share with you some of the measures we're taking to keep our nearly 100 million guests safe. I would like to introduce a leader who truly understands the importance of public safety, not just here in the world's busiest airport, but throughout our great city. He's a passionate supporter of all we do at Hartsville Jackson, and we are grateful for his distinguished leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Mayor of the City of Atlanta, the Honorable Kasim Reed. Good morning. Uh, I want to begin today by remembering the victims and survivors of Friday's heinous terrorist attacks in Paris, France. And I want to extend our deepest sympathies in the city of Atlanta to all of the people of Paris and to France, America's oldest ally. Uh, at this time, I would like to pause uh, for a brief moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, this press event uh, was scheduled before this weekend's tragedy. But this weekend's tragedy should remind every resident and visitor to the city of Atlanta to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity to the appropriate law enforcement authorities. We're taking additional steps necessary to ensure the safety of everyone in the city of Atlanta, including increasing patrols around public spaces, such as shopping centers, theaters, and other public gathering spots designated by our police department. We have also stepped up security on the Atlanta streetcar. We've reminded streetcar employees of the need to be extra vigilant in recognizing and reporting anything that appears out of the ordinary. I want to remind everyone here today that my administration will take every possible measure to keep our city and its people safe but some patience will be required as we enter the holiday season. My number one priority has always been and will be that every neighborhood and every person in Atlanta remains safe. And that applies particularly here in Hartsville, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport. This facility is not only an entry and exit point for travelers to and from the city of Atlanta, it is also the southeastern United States gateway to the world. From this facility, you can reach more than 150 domestic destinations, more than 60 international cities, and 50 countries. More than 2,500 flights take off and land here daily, carrying passengers from literally every corner of the world. So while we're very proud of our airport, we're also aware of how vital it is to make every effort to keep passengers safe in the terminal and on the aircraft as they board and leave. So today, my team will lay out for you a comprehensive, collaborative approach to safety that we will employ at our airport. It starts with what I believe is one of the most important aspects of security and public safety, which is a strong interagency law enforcement partnership. At this airport, there is a constant presence of collaboration between the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Transportation Security Administration, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the Atlanta Fire and Rescue Department, and of course, the women and men of the Atlanta Police Department. Those agencies take a layered approach to security, meaning their individual efforts don't happen in a vacuum. They work together at every juncture, to ensure that there are no gaps in our screening or as few gaps in our screening as possible. And as the busiest airport in the world, we're committed to being the leader in not just passenger screening, but comprehensive employee security screening. Every employee who works at the airport is thoroughly screened before proceeding beyond our security checkpoints. As a result, more than 40,000 of our employees have already been screened. 
We will continue to take appropriate steps to protect the more than 96 million passengers who pass through our airport each year. And I am confident that this team will remain vigilant and is capable of securing our airport. The reason that we called a press conference last week was just to let folks know that as we implement these additional measures, um, it will require patience because some delays may be caused as we take additional steps. So as we approach the holiday season, we really would encourage everyone to the extent that you can to get to the airport a bit earlier because of the additional security preparations. And now I would like to bring up Miguel Southwell, the general manager of Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Miguel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. After the tragic events that unfolded in Paris last week, and as the investigation into the crash of the Russian airliner continues, questions are being raised about security issues and the potential rise of insider threats. I want our passengers and employees and partners to know that we take such threats seriously. Hartsville Jackson is one of only three airports in the United States with employee screening practices. We have over 4,000 badged employees. In September, we launched employee screening, and by the end of the year, these employees will go through full security screening. But that's not all we're doing. Take a look around us today. You see law enforcement personnel, uniformed officers, tactical response, and canine teams. All of this and additional elements that you won't see are part of a tightly layered approach to security. Additionally, as part of our overall plan to tighten our security, we previously had 70 access points to secure areas at the airport. We now have only 11 restricting nearly 60 access points. We have dramatically increased the number of employees screened, and we have placed an increased emphasis on searching vehicles entering the airfield. We are in close coordination and in constant communication with our federal partners and law enforcement agencies, and we constantly communicate with our employees, tenants, neighbors on these security issues. Even with all of these actions we are taking, our security measures are constantly evolving to adapt to the changing threat environment. As we near the end of the year, we anticipate reaching 100 million passengers for the year, along with substantially increased cargo operations. As a result of this rising passenger traffic and cargo volume, we have been collaborating and working very closely with our federal, state, and local partners, including TSA and Customs and Border Protection, to ensure that the right staffing levels that are crucially needed for the effective screening of our passengers and cargo are in place. Ladies and gentlemen, at the world's busiest and most efficient airport, we remain hypervigilant, and we work every day to keep our facilities secure and our guests safe. Thank you, and now I'd like to introduce our Chief of Police for the Atlanta Police Department, Mr. George Turner. Thank you, Miguel. I, I really want to reiterate the Mayor's comments. I want to address uh, several things. First, the Atlanta Police Department is working with our federal, state, and local partners to review and respond to all threats. I want to reiterate our, our federal partners We've not confirmed any credible threats to this region as of today, although we are working collectively to investigate any and all threats that may come to our report. If a similar attack were to occur here in Atlanta, as we saw in Paris, the Atlanta Police Department would deal with a layer of approach both with our federal, state, and regional partners to mitigate any threat such as that. We're encourage, encouraging all of our officers to remain vigilant as they move through their shift 
commanders are stressing this message during their roll call training before they start their shift each and every day. We're also stressing the importance of being vigilant and visible in and around shopping centers, as the mayor said, theaters, public gatherings, and other areas that we're concerned with. The department will provide increased direct patrol on all of these locations, particularly in the shopping area as we move to the holiday season. We're also encouraging our residents and citizens and visitors to stay vigilant and provide information as they see it. The Homeland Security for the United States and the Atlanta Police Department and our, and our local and state partners have always encouraged people to see something, say something. If you see things that are suspicious and out of the norm, we encourage you to call 911 so that we can investigate any and every issue that you may have and be concerned with. So we are uh, actually prepared to move forward with an aggressive role in and around all events, soft targets that we've identified with our federal, state, and local partners. Thank you. So uh, to summarize uh, what has been uh, shared, we need everyone to be extra vigilant. If you see something uh, that looks unusual uh, to you, please uh, let someone from law enforcement know right away. Uh, we are encouraging people to arrive at the airport a bit earlier for travel because our enhanced uh, security measure measures may create uh, some uh, additional delay. But it really is all for the most important reason of keeping everyone safe. Um, with that, uh, we'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I won't say that it's ever been. What I know is, is that um, we understand that the environment has changed. And this was before um, the tragic events of this weekend. We obviously asked for this president. We think the environment has changed, and we're certainly going to do our part uh, to hearten the airport. I'll just put it that way. Barry? Yes. Yeah, there are people from TSA here today because uh, they're working on another project and we thought that it was more important um, that we get out and have the conversation we were going to have no matter what. Could you repeat the question, sir? I'm just interested why there is no TSA representative here and what will TSA do moving forward if you can make any sort of comment regarding that with the November 5th Inspector General's report about serious lapses that they found in at least eight different airports across the country. And so last week we met with all of the federal agencies and we talked about having this particular uh, press conference. Uh, of course, it, it takes some time before TSA would get authorization to have a public discussion. Understand that airport security is not something that you want to discuss in detail, uh, because of course you're tipping off the bad guys as well. And so um, we have a very close working relationship with them, and their absence here is no indication of um, uh, that relationship. We have a very close working relationship with them. And that particular um, accusation by that passenger is being investigated. Uh, we have talked with our colleagues at TSA. We have um, anywhere from 65 to 80,000 employees coming through, passengers coming through this airport every day. Additionally, we have some 20,000 employees that access the secure area. Uh, for the year, the TSA um, has caught almost 2,500 guns for the year. And so, at the end of the day, you know, we're constantly evaluating what it is that we need to do. We're constantly retraining people to make sure that we have an effective program. And so again, um, it's a very close coordination, and we're working more closely to make sure that our folks do an effective job.
mean, I'm affected very deeply, Aaron, but what it causes me to do is to think through and to begin to prepare in a more vigorous way um, for what is a clear, uh, a clear eventuality for our city. And uh, to do everything I can uh, to harden Atlanta and to harden the airport as a target. Our press event today is really about not waiting. Um, during the holiday season, because of the things that we were seeing in the environment, as a city that is responsible for the airport, uh, we were concerned and we wanted to do everything in our power that we could do to act. Um, but to answer your question directly, uh, it affected me very deeply as the leader of the city. And I'm going to be meeting with uh, our entire public safety uh, department to find out what we need to do. Because as the nature of uh, terrorism changes, the nature of our city's preparation will need to change. And so our public safety officials um, will have a different and greater responsibility based upon what we saw this weekend in Paris. And I've got to do everything I can to support them. Mayor, what, what is your stance on accepting refugees specifically from Syria and has that stance changed at all in the last few days? Um, my stance is that uh, prior to letting uh, refugees into the United States uh, from Syria uh, as, a port of the, as, a, as a result of the the challenges that Syria is facing is, is that that review and background check has to be significantly enhanced and changed. And so I think that in the United States, we're going to have to redouble our efforts of vetting individuals that come into the United States of America in a way that we would not have before. There are some mayors, who, there are some governors who are saying they will no longer accept refugees. I just wanted to give you my answer. My answer is that uh, the United States uh, government is responsible for that vetting process. And I think that it needs to be reviewed and redoubled, and we cannot proceed in a status quo. You're going to Paris in two weeks. Talk about any changes to your security. You know, I'm not going to change uh, my security detail very much because. Uh, I'm not going to give in to fear, and I have confidence um, that the French government can uh, provide appropriate protection uh, for the delegation on climate. And so when I got the call to ask me, was I going to cancel my trip uh, to Paris as a result of uh, this weekend's event, and my answer was no. I think that one of the most powerful things that we can do to show how we feel about what the people of France are experiencing uh, is to move forward with the climate summit uh, and to show um, that these terrorists will not win. Mayor, you mentioned about the public safety meeting with everybody. Can you kind of break down if something like what happened in Paris was that here, what would be the chain of command that makes as far as getting first responders, calling in the National Guard if we have to? What would be the protocol for breaking that and put into action? I'm going to let Chief Turner answer that. Again, it would be a layered approach. Our first responders is the number one uh, person that will respond immediately. That means the local authorities would have the initial response to an event such as that. We would immediately stand up a joint operations center with our federal, state, and local partners, and depending on the location of the event, we'll determine who would take the lead. Uh, Chief, let me ask you about uh, the, the news uh, over the weekend with regard to uh, law enforcement being handicapped social media because apparently there are some ways that they can do chatter that it only exists for the times that they're saying. I know you have a unit that tries to monitor social media. Can you comment on, on trying to close that gap? Well, I think that that's a bigger discussion than the local authority. Uh, going dark is something that we've been working on at the, at the state, at the federal level with all of our, uh, our city partners, with major city chiefs really pushing back on the technology that's going to be made available come January. That's critical for our law enforcement and intelligence gathering. I believe that because of the events that took place in, on Friday, I'm confident that the our senators and our, our Congress folk will make a determination to allow us to move in a more robust area and being able to, to create and generate the intelligence that we need to protect our citizens uh, here in the homeland.
So every week we do an analysis on everything that takes place in the city of Atlanta, small events to large. We provide a layered approach on what we have in, in, in store and how we plan to provide security for each of those events. When there's an event at the masquerade, we know that. When there's an event at, uh, for instance, one of our uh, small halls, we know where that is. We have uh, agreed to have dialogue and conversation with the security directors of those locations to provide additional layers of protection. Uh, and uh, we won't go into the facts of what we'll be providing, but it's clear that we've had communications with our, our um, the National Football League partners as well as the National Basketball Association partners. Uh, we had a game this past Sunday. Uh, there were some changes in the way that we provided layered security, and we'll continue to do that at all events moving forward. I think that concludes it. Thank you very much for giving us your time today.